let's start with a quick overview of what we are trying to do here. We are doing self-supervised learning, which means that you have a lot of unlabeled data, zero labeled data, and the network needs to self-supervise itself. One idea that we started with was take your images, push them through your convolutional neural network, cluster those features or featureized images, use the cluster assignments for each data point and each image to give you the labels or pseudo labels, and then do back propagation and do the usual classification loss. The drawback with that method was that each time you need to look at your entire data set, push all of them through your convolutional neural network, and then do the clustering. Once you have your labels, then you can do mini batches to cast the gradient descent. Then we moved on to contrastive predictive coding, which was taking as input a single image. It would push it through a convolutional neural network, in particular ResNet, stop at the feature levels, uh, and then uh, do sort of like what we were doing with natural language, do next uh, token prediction. You can think of these as tokens or features. And then you had a small neural network on top of those features, which was masked. It's a masked convolution. It's not going to pay attention to the things in the past. This was using a single image to self-supervise itself. How about using two images? So last session, we stopped here with contrastive multi-view coding, which is going to work with two images. These are two views of the same object or the same scene. You take them, encode them, and then in the latent space, you want to use your contrastive loss, which means that you want to make uh, your problem and turn it into choosing or finding the positive sample among lots of negatives. And this is how you're going to bring back your favorite softmax function here. And we noticed that the contrastive loss is going to be related to the mutual information between two images at the feature level or two images at the pixel level. And here you see exactly in your mathematical formula why you need more k. The more negative examples you have in contrastive learning, this log of k is going to be bigger and therefore you're maximizing or it's pushing the information content, the shared information content of these two images to be bigger and bigger. So the more negatives you show it, the higher is going to be the mutual information. At the same time, if you minimize the contrastive loss, you're maximizing the negative of the contrastive loss, and therefore you're also increasing the mutual information between these two images. Any questions up until this point? Okay, perfect. Let's continue and say, what if you have multiple views for your scene or for some data sets, you have multiple views. How can you incorporate that? You know that you can look at pairs of views using the contrastive loss. You can pick one of those views among perhaps four views as the core view and compare everybody else to the core view using your contrast and then sum over all of these losses. And this way you can handle four views or more. This is gonna be less costly than having a full graph where you are comparing every pair of view together. And this is combinatorially big. The more views you have, the more operations you need to do here. Okay. And what are the sort of views that you're gonna see when you're analyzing images? Perhaps you can separate the luminance from the chrominance channels. So LAB is another way of representing images. Rather than red, green, blue channels, you can have LAB channels. For video, you can pick a frame, which is going to be an image at a particular time step. The neighboring frames, perhaps frames into the future, frames in the past, could be different views. At the same time, you can include optical flow or optical flow, it's going to tell you it's a two-dimensional vector per each point, per each pixel in your image, which is going to, for instance, tell you where this bear is going to end up in the next frame, or where this particular pixel of on, the, on this particular object is going to end up in the next frame in your video. And optical flows 
we have some ways of estimating them using deep neural networks that we cover in part one of the course. These are going to have applications when you do robotics or self-driving cars. And then you can have two separate contrastive laws. One of them is between frames, perhaps consecutive frames of a video, and the other one could be between a frame and the corresponding optical flow. These are going to give you two different contrastive losses that you can sum them up, perhaps weight them accordingly and sum them up. You can have multiple image views, perhaps luminance, chrominance, we covered them. Depth could be another view. Surface normals could be another view. And semantic labels could be another view of the same scene. Any questions about CMC, contrastive multi-view coding? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect. So the thing that I wanted to emphasize is this connection between contrastive loss and mutual information and see it mathematically why having a larger K helps in contrastive learning. Intuitively, the more negative examples you have in your set, the higher is the chance that one of them is very similar to the true answer. Therefore, your network needs to work harder to find the answer. So it's focusing on the hard examples. The more negatives you show it, it needs to work harder to find the correct answer. And therefore, the features that it's going to learn are going to look better or work better in practice. The other one is this temperature, which is usually set to be 0.07. It's a small number. And this number being small is going to help your learning algorithm focus on the positive example more than the negative examples. So in your loss, you're giving more weight to positive stuff compared to negative stuff because the softmax distribution is going to uh, get closer and closer to one hot vectors. Okay? So you are being more optimistic rather than pessimistic and look at the negative examples and get disappointed.